Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. Last time, we picked Kina up from their marsh. Uh, we went through the Lindblom Dragon Gate and through Gizamaluk's Grotto. And we fought Gizzy the Lizzy. Now we're catching up with Garnet and Steiner. Uh, since the party is effectively split, Steiner and Garnet are trying to get back to Alexandria through Southgate here. Uh, they're doing that with the goal of talking some sense into the Queen, because meanwhile, she has an army of black mage golems invading the neighboring kingdom of Bermesia, which happens to be the home of Freya, who we uh, met for the first time back in Lindlum. And that is currently where Zidane, Vivi, Freya, and Kina are on their way to. And we're running into a problem because Steiner is trying to smuggle Garnet across the border in a bindle. In a jump. God damn, he is strong to be able to do this. And luckily, they aren't going to fully inspect what's inside the bingle. The bingle? The bindle. Because it's also loaded up alongside with Garnet with the stinky pickles from Lindblom that Steiner kind of acquired a taste for. That's some clever forethought that they stopped to get the pickles just to repel any guards or anyone who might be too curious about what he's, uh, what he's hauling around in there. Just a giant, you know, hundred pound bindle of very stinky Geishel pickles. Um, we have to go through the gate on the right hand side. And in order to to make that passage, we're gonna have to get everybody to clear the way. We're gonna have to make sure the coast is clear. So we want to herd everybody over to the left side of the screen. And they're talking about the world outside of the Mist Continent being like uncharted territory. Nobody here knows what's beyond this continent. One big mystery. Ah, oh, the art here's great. So we're gonna console this woman. We have to get that guy to move. I don't remember how, but there's not that many options to mess with on screen. And while we talk this woman through her consolement, there are a couple things I want to bring up from last time because I didn't get a chance to point them out. Uh, the first is uh, the room with the really annoying enemies uh, just prior to Gizamaluk. There are some vines that you can climb up and you get to uh, these enemies called Grand Dragons. They're like crazy powerful. You're not supposed to be messing with them yet. Uh, but there's one small way in which you can kind of break FF9, at least for a, uh, up until like the middle of disc three uh, by killing them and they're crazy over leveled compared to you but there is a way that you can grind them uh, you don't even really have to grind them you can you can just kill them one two three real quick and you only need to do it's like one or two of them to be set until disc three uh, and the way you do that is by having Freya win the Festival of the Hunt back in Lindblom, and getting uh, the level 5 death spell from that. Okay, we still have to make this guy leave. My man, what is it that you want most in this world? I intend to work hard while I'm here. Something I must tell you. Ah, okay. We just needed to get the dialogue from the Ant Eater guy? I don't know about the gate being broken and him just polishing it up. I also love the, like, the kill him, don't kill him line. Uh, we have one more problem. We have one more problem. Uh, and this guard is actually going to address that with us. Uh, but since we did a solid for Vivi and got him a Tetra Master card instead of getting the Coral Ring for Freya, can't really do that. Not that we were going to anyway, because that would take a lot of fun out of the combat. Part of me does regret not doing that, though, because the uh, encounter rate on the PC is so low that eventually I'm going to have to grind. Whereas with normal versions of FF9, like the original PS1 version or even the, the re-release of it on PS3, I would not have that problem. 
uh, the encounter rate's much higher. But we got the gate pass now. Also, if you look at that poster on the left-hand side, near the foreground, it might be a little bit hard to tell. But that is a poster for, uh, I believe, Lindblom. But it is spelled Lindblom. And the thing is that that text appears in a bunch of other places in the game, so I don't know which one is actually supposed to be right. Lindblom even appears uh, in the opening of the game. This is not a one-off typo. So I, I don't know if the actual name of the town is supposed to be Lindblom or not, but Lindblom sounds better, and that's what appears when you enter the town, so that's what we're going to continue to stick with. Uh, they're going to take a lift up to Traino, and then from Traino get to Alexandria. Oh god, that mechanical looking unicorn. It's so cool! At the head of the train? Is that the head or the back of the train? Fuck, either way, it's so cool. This chest here, we can get a potion out of it. Eh, not bad. I think that guy on the right is just one more uh, shop. We're gonna try to backtrack, because remember there was that ladder with the chest. No, I guess we'll come back here at some other point in time. No, oh, why not get some more potions? Costs so little. And uh, the inventory of potions is shared between both parties. So since they don't have a healer in, in Garnet, they are going to need uh, the extra potions while they're separated. Plus, I don't think any of them can learn. No. Let me not say that because I'm not actually sure. I don't know if any of them can learn Cure. Uh, and they're not going to learn it anytime soon, even if they can, so eh, whatever. Just going to rely on lots of potions. The other thing from last episode that not only did I forget to mention, I forgot to even do it, and that sucks. There's a clock in uh, Quan's house, and if you examine it, you get a prompt that says that there is nothing inside, and it's a uh, just this cool, really subtle reference to Final Fantasy VI, because there, if you remember back to the FF6 LP, there is an elixir in every single one of those grandfather clocks. I think that there is only... Yeah, I think it's only the one clock in six that doesn't have anything behind it. And now we learn that it was actually uh, Garnet's idea to do all of this and to use the pickles. God, it feels like a deadly premonition sentence. Use the pickles. Some more shit talking about Zidane. <laughs> Steiner does take a really, really long time to warm up to Zidane. <laughs> and while they're heading to Alexandria, we're going to flash back to the main party, the A-Team, Zidane, Vivi, Freya, and Kina. Picking up where we left off, uh, right where we fought Gizamaluk. So we've taken the passage through the grotto, and now we can head uh, north towards Bermesia. First, we can make a stop at this gate, where Freya notes that there's the smell of fire and blood in the air. Must have been a huge battle on the other side of the gate. And I specifically came here because this ties into the conversation. Hey, there it is. S slash he. The conversation that Arth and I had on the last episode. Uh, with regards to uh, Kina's gender and the pronouns, the very specific pronouns they, they sometimes use uh, for them. Plus, we can get two chests here. Including uh, a tent and I think a high potion or an elixir. High potion. Very good. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do now is, again, because the PC version has like half the encounter rate, I'm behind on learning skills and levels, so I'm going to spend a second just catching up. That's Permesia up there. 
and I'll see you in a second. Ah, that should do. We got like three levels on everyone, plus learn some skills I was lagging behind on. Just wasn't getting enough AP because I wasn't getting enough encounters. I think that's more important than the levels anyway. Oh man, I'm happy we're in Promethea. We're getting along there. We're getting near the end of disc one. Time's come. Like the theme of Bramecia. The uh, like the realm of eternal rain, that it's so it's so cool. Plus, it's the kingdom that Freya hails from, and Freya is the best. So you know it's gonna be good. And we're gonna learn a lot about Freya and behind this cart. <laughs> Just like my dad. <laughs> he was killed by a giant crab last year. might be too dark. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. There, that text box, uh, it's not the best. Like, they could have said received Stellazio card cancer. The cancer Stellazio. Anything, anything but received cancer. It's, it's maybe the very worst it's ever been. What, what the fuck? <laughs> Debating on whether or not I have to cut that whole joke out though. Cause holy shit, that, that's real fucking dark. No, I, I don't know, it's gone too long now. There would be like a straight minute of silence, huh? <laughs> Should I name the episode that? <laughs> That's the real question! <laughs> kinda wanna? I kinda want to. Because between Received Cancer and Stinky Pickles, which is, I think, the second place candidate right now? Mmm. Let's explore this Bermesia Mansion, shall we? <laughs> This game sometimes. Hey, a mimic! I love me some mimics. I love mimics. They're like my favorite RPG slash fantasy enemy. Uh, the ones in FF9 do this constantly. Uh, they call in an extra enemy at the beginning of the fight. And if you kill the ad, the uh, Mimic will eventually just call another one in, so you actually have to deal with the Mimic. When they call these enemies in, it presents a very specific problem. Is this death? Holy shit, I don't remember this animation. Whoa, that's a really cool animation! You stole one of my pro- God damn it. This is the specific problem that it presents. You have to kill the Mimic first, so it doesn't continue to summon ads. But also, this ad that it calls, the magic vice, demands to be killed quickly as well. I hate them so, so, so much. Because it's gonna... Unless this thunder kills it, it's gonna escape. I guarantee it. We don't have time to set up for enough. Nope. Mm. Hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him so much. They really are like the thieves in Slay the Spire who steal your money and then if you don't kill them in a certain number of turns, they run away with it. Like, ex except in this case, they mug you for items and run away with them. Lost a potion to this stupid, stupid enemy. 
Do we get into the other side of the mansion this way? Oh, I forgot the floor collapses. Oh, no, we actually needed to do that. We needed to do that because it creates a walkway to the chest on the other side. Cool. I, I uh, walked out of that side of the mansion the first time around and went to the right because I thought going to the left first would lead to progression. I wanted to get the mimic on the right side first. Turns out I actually had to do that. So, whoo. And yes, there are enemies in Bermesia. It's just, again, that low, low, low encounter rate on PC. Oh my god, are they gonna use God's Accomplice? These specific lizards look... Ooh, that was a nice big crit. Juicy. Uh, they look so much like my boy, the chameleon from uh, Hunter x Hunter. So luckily this is not an instant petrification, but that countdown is tied to the ATB, and it goes real quick. Uh, so next person who comes up is going to want to soft Freya to dispel the petrification, otherwise it's basically just death. I wonder if that that doesn't count down while she's in midair for the, the jump, is it? Does it? Is it, does it, boozy, bobs it? I guess we're going to find out. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, it's still a 5. Plus, status effects go away out of combat. Oh, that's really, really nice. If they had, uh, if they had cast that on someone else, I would have had to have wasted a soft in a turn. Well, I kind of did that anyway. It's just, I don't think the soft would have hit her up in midair. And, of course, for good measure, a second mimic. is the best! Because of the mimics. I wish more things were mimics. What staircases and ladders and doors that are mimics. I want items on the ground that you go and, and you go to pick them up and the items turn into mimics. Like, uh, like anglerfish. Just dangling an item above the ground. You see that glow of something, that little glimmer of maybe a jewel. You go to grab it and they emerge from the ground. That's what I want. More mimics. I'll deal with that. And are we. No! Not even close. They escaped so fast! They do leave you with a lot of XP, though. Not that much AP, but quite a bit of XP. Anything worth checking out in here? Uh, not particularly, no. Oh, we have another uh, model of the town. This gets us across to the opposite balcony, where we can continue on, which we will do next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.